lot of people are terrified by snakes. This is a serious issue that even has a scientific term, herpetophobia. Many people cannot stand the image of a snake and get severely traumatized when meeting even a harmless snake in the forest. It's hard to imagine what a person with such a phobia could feel when seeing a huge snake that can swallow a crocodile whole. And this is not a fairy tale character or a sketch from a horror movie. This monster really lived on our planet. Scientists discovered its remains quite recently, in 2009. Or maybe it still lives somewhere. Meet the Titanoboa, the largest and most terrible snake of all time. Now you'll get the answers to all your questions. How huge was it compared to the dinosaurs? How strong was it? Who could it kill? Why might Titanoboa reappear? And many other interesting facts. Titanoboa These were quite routine excavations conducted during the expedition of an international research group. The group was led by Jonathan Block, a vertebrate paleontologist at the University of Florida, and Carlos Jaramillo, a paleobotanist at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama. They were working in the Amazon basin, namely in the coal mines of the Cerro Hon Formation in La Guajira, Colombia. Suddenly, scientists stumbled upon something extremely unusual that made quite a stir in the scientific world. The remains of ancient snakes the size that we had never imagined before. According to preliminary calculations, it turned out that these snakes were up to 14 meters, 46 feet, or even more, and weighed at least a ton. These huge snakes lived in the era of the Middle and Late Paleocene, from about 60 to 58 million years ago. In fact, right after all non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. And this was no exception to the rule. In total, fossils of as many as 30 individuals were discovered, and not only vertebrae, but even three whole skulls. So there is no doubt the pantheon of ancient giant monsters now has another terrible specimen. At first glance, it might seem that the 14 meter, 45.93 feet size is nothing special. Well, it's not a mile. Moreover, it's only three meters, 9.8 feet longer than the largest giant anaconda ever recorded which is 11.43 meters, or 37.5 feet long. But this is just at first glance. Even if you think about it without a visual illustration, the Titanoboa is a third larger than the giant anaconda. And if you look at a visual representation and compare it with a person, it becomes a little uncomfortable. Are you ready? Here is a sketchy and rather bland infographic. Here's a Titanoboa from above. It's already quite impressive how small the human figure looks. But enthusiasts have taken the trouble to recreate a full-sized Titanoboa in all its glory and dimensions. One of the most famous reconstructions is at the Smithsonian Institution Exhibition. Here it is. As you can see, nothing special. Just a huge snake eating a crocodile. And this is not an artist's fantasy. Researchers have found plenty of fossilized skeleton parts in the Amazon basin, and they are amazing. The only thing is, we can't say anything for sure about the color. Most likely, Titanoboa had camouflage coloring, like in the modern python, a dark green shade of scales and dark annular spots throughout the body. But there's no need to guess about the sizes. Here is another comparison. Left, Titanoboa vertebrae. What's on the right? What do you think? A vertebrae of a grass snake or a common viper? Well, far from it. This is the vertebrae of an anaconda, the largest living snake. Although dinosaurs were already extinct by that time, 
it would be interesting to imagine how the Titanoboa would coexist with other gigantic reptiles. Let's take one of the most recognizable and also the largest dinosaurs, the Diplodocus. According to some estimates, these monsters reached an average of 27 meters and up to 35 meters, 88.58 to 114.83 feet from the tip of the muzzle to the tip of the tail. That is, as we can see, the Titanoboa's length barely reached half of the average Diplodocus. However, their weight differed dramatically. Based on various estimates, Diplodocus weighed from 20 to 80 tons. With a mass of up to one ton, Titanoboa certainly could not compete with such a monster. To the Diplodocus, the Titanoboa was nothing more than a pipsqueak scurrying around and always getting in the way. Although, in all fairness, we should mention that the snake was still very formidable and probably reached a meter at its thickest. At most, Diplodocus probably could stumble on it. For smaller animals, on the other hand, Titanoboa would certainly mean trouble if they had the great misfortune to meet one. Looking at the reconstruction, it seems that this monster could swallow not only a crocodile, but a whole rhino. But was it really so? At first, scientists were sure that the Titanoboa was the top predator and a quite ferocious and surreptitious one. Just like pythons, it could have stalked its prey, caught them off guard, put them in a deadly embrace, strangled, and then swallowed them whole. Indeed, physically, a Titanoboa was probably strong enough to break all the bones and strangle a horse-sized animal. According to various estimates, the contraction force of this snake's embrace could be as high as 30 kilograms per square centimeter. 400 PSI, pound per square inch. In all seriousness, it was believed that the Titanoboa had crocodilomorphs for lunch. But still, the scientific community wasn't fully unanimous on this. David Pauley, a professor at Indiana University, believed that among other things, this huge snake ate fish. As further studies showed, the conclusions about the crocodile-eating Titanoboa were far from the truth. In fact, the Titanoboa was more like a blue whale or a whale shark. Having a huge size, it ate every little thing, mostly fish. How did we come to this conclusion? It was none other but one of the discoverers of the Titanoboa, Jonathan Block. However, he thought so from the very beginning. In 2013, Block and colleagues published a new paper reporting the findings of Titanoboa skulls. Thanks to them, researchers could clarify the structural features of the snake's head and hence its diet. It turned out that the Titanoboa had many palatine and lateral teeth. Also, they weren't very durable. This means that Titanoboa mostly ate relatively small animals that couldn't fight it off. But at the same time, they were slippery and nimble and prone to escape. Similar structural features were found in modern higher snakes that mainly eat fish. Based on this, the scientists concluded that the most terrible snake of all time was in fact a professional angler, relatively slow and clumsy on the ground, but quite nimble in the water. In a thriving natural environment, the Titanoboa was unlikely to have problems with food sources. With its formidable size and strength, the snake itself definitely wasn't anyone's immediate prey. But it may well have had natural enemies. For example, the giant tortoise, Carbonemis. This is suggested by the fact that the remains of these turtles are often found in swamps and lakes alongside the remains of Titanoboas. Their shell was 1.7 meters long. They certainly didn't hunt each other, but they probably fought for food from time to time because Carbonemis ate the same fish and even hunted the same way using a disguise. In such fights, the Titanoboa was much less likely to win despite being significantly larger. 
Titanoboa could hardly overcome the tortoise's powerful shell and crushing jaws. But no matter how formidable competitors the Carbonemis were, if the Titanoboa survived to this day, it would have to face a truly ferocious, cruel, and invincible enemy, us. Needless to say, these giant snakes would be highly valued by luxury goods manufacturers. Snakeskin products are still incredibly expensive and are in demand among the sophisticated public. Most likely, if the Titanoboa managed to survive to this day and avoid being killed off, it would be under the strictest international protection. And due to its extreme vulnerability, it would be an exceptionally rare species on the verge of extinction. On the other hand, the habitat itself would be quite favorable because the Titanoboa wouldn't intersect too much with people. With all its large and small bodies of water, the Amazon Basin is one of the most inaccessible places on the planet. Until now, more and more new animal species are being discovered there, which we couldn't even imagine before. So maybe the Titanoboa still exists. We just haven't found it. Unfortunately, no. Such a large biological species would undoubtedly leave some traces. And over so many years of observing the area, we would have found at least the indirect signs. But we only find fossilized remains that are tens of millions of years old. But no one says such monsters wouldn't appear in the future. Are you saying it's impossible? Well, it would certainly seem so. Why on earth would they reappear? But in fact, this is where it gets interesting. To understand why such monsters might appear in the future, we need to look into the past, specifically at the conditions that made their emergence possible. To begin with, let's remember that giants were thriving in those days. From giant ferns to giant dragonflies, not to mention very diverse dinosaur species. Of course, we have huge whales, elephants, and sequoias now. But let's be honest, there are very, very few real giants. This is not even close to the number of monstrous giants who roamed the Earth for millions of years. But why was it so? And where did they all go? For the most part, the gigantism of certain species was caused by different factors. But as for reptiles, they have a very specific feature. Most of them are cold-blooded or poikilothermic. This term denotes animals with an unstable body temperature that changes based on the temperature of the external environment. As warm-blooded creatures, we can maintain our standard 36.6 degrees Celsius, 97.88 degrees Fahrenheit from within. Snakes, on the other hand, need the environment to provide such a temperature. That's why reptiles love to bask in the sun so much. They need heat like air. So, the remains of the largest snake in the history of Earth suggest the incredibly hot tropical climate 60 million years ago. At an average temperature below 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, a python with the weight of a polar bear and the length of a gray whale couldn't survive and moreover reach such a size. Titanoboa has become another argument for scientists in proving an important fact. 58 to 60 million years ago, the average annual temperature in the tropics was probably 30 to 34 degrees Celsius, 86 to 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Why is that? The enzymes involved in the metabolism of almost every terrestrial organism work best at temperatures between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius, 95 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Naturally, the body often spends some extra energy on warming up. This means that the size of the cold-blooded creatures correlates with the average annual temperature. If we assume that Titanoboa's metabolism was similar to that of modern snakes, then it needed an average annual temperature of 30 to 34 degrees Celsius, 86 to 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, 
which is 6 to 10 degrees higher than we previously thought. And what is the current situation with the climate in recent decades? That's right, global warming. We don't mean to scare anyone, but with the existing dynamics, there may well arise conditions conducive to the emergence of monsters like the Titanoboa in the future. Of course, being close to human civilization, with all its harmful effects on nature, would hardly help the Amazon jungle bring a new incarnation of the Titanoboa into existence. But still, according to many paleoclimatologists, the planet will witness very interesting speciation in the future.